present. Oh, you got it. Uh, this morning, John Radke is here to present on clutter and how much it can overwhelm your life. Now, this is not George Heck's tyranny of stuff, but it's a little bit similar. So same vein for those that have heard it, for those that haven't, welcome to the new, the new thing. Please help me welcome John. Okay. Recently had a client that I did a full remodel on. So I'm a general contractor and pretty much do everything that can happen with a house. This client had a whole bunch of stuff in one house and bought a new house. So at the new house, they're eager to move into the new house because their parents are moving into the old house and their parents have a lot of stuff. So it's this three tiered sequential move that's planned. You get done with the one remodel. She moves all of her stuff into the new house. That's great, going really well. Her parents move everything into her old house while we're trying to remodel it. Because this the other house needed a lot of work too. New paint all over the place, new flooring, new kitchen, new bathroom. So full remodel, gutting everything. I have never seen somebody with that much stuff. Nothing was complete junk. Nothing was, let's say, just trash, but it was just weird collections of things. Hockey gear, bobbleheads, random beer signs, and I don't know how much else. The garage was completely packed. A bonus room that luckily didn't need to be re remodeled was packed floor to ceiling with, with stuff. And then we got our remodel done as quickly as we could. And it's, and I checked in just the other day. This is six months ago. They still haven't unboxed their stuff. So they're still living out of a small little amount of the things. And my mind just pulsates with a little bit of anxiety and angst for these people because they have so many things that are weighing them down that they can't live their own life. And I know through the daughter that is causing a lot of discord between the two of them. When we buy things, we own them, but they also own us. And I don't know if you've ever come across that. I read a book and listened to multiple things from Marie Kondo and her idea is, and it's the um, original book is life-changing magic of tidying up. And her whole philosophy is you only keep things that bring you joy. And there's no limit on how many things that can bring you joy and that's fine. But if your things are weighing you down and causing you stress and anxiety and not enabling you to live, then there's a problem. Now, people have a legacy of trauma. I know a lot of people that have been houseless or homeless and have had all of their stuff ripped away. And those individuals, when they do get into a better living situation, oftentimes hoard on to things and hold on to things because it gives them some control and some power. I know my grandmother's generation living through the Great Depression. When you had next to nothing and you were barely, barely getting by, you hear the people that save aluminum foil and save balls of rubber bands, newspapers, those type of things. That's a legacy of trauma. That's a legacy of going through some chaos and then finding ways where you can control your own environment. You can control at least that factor in this wide world we live in that is full of chaos. It's full of change. I've been trying to figure out how the legacy of that can transfer through generations. I got to see it with this family that I was helping and I've also been able to see it in my own family. My parents both grew up very poor. My grandfather died when my mom was six years old. She was the youngest, but my grandmother raised six kids on her own. That was wild. They didn't know where the next meal was coming from a lot of the time. And so now, if there is a empty pantry at my parents' house, like, or halfway empty, like if you can start seeing a couple inches of the shelves, 
they start to panic. My dad grew up one of seven kids and on a Navy salary uh, from my grandfather. And so they were, they were right on the edge. They never quite were super hungry, but they were close many, many times. And so the two of them have this legacy of having to have all the food all the time. And if they have a full pantry, then they calm down. If the fridge is at least three quarters full, then they calm down. If it starts to get below that, they start to panic. If we have events like Y2K, if you guys remember that, my parents went ultra hoard food mode. We had enough tomato sauce cans to last us the next, I, I know at least six years after that, because I, I came back home from college and I went through into the garage and there was still like four cases of tomato sauce or tomato paste, tomato paste cans. And I asked, hey, can I finally just bring these out they're six or five, four years old now. They're going to be expired. Can I use these uh, at school? And they're like, oh yeah, sure. Take as much as you want. Well, I took two giant 55 gallon trash bags worth of food and it didn't make a dent in their supplies. So just to think a thought of all of that stuff is still holding them down. Last time I visited, there's still items from Y2K in our house. They're 21 years old now. They're old enough to drink on their own. It's a little bit wild and a little bit excessive. So my challenge to you is to figure out what do you hoard? What do you collect? What do you keep more of that's weighing you down? Because if you get the opportunity to, you can go through it and you can clear out the clutter. The more space you have, the more opportunity you have to move it around and enjoy the space you're living in. If your house is becoming a museum of artifacts of all of your past history, plus all of the things you just haven't quite gotten a chance to get it, uh, to go through, oh, plus all those to-do list items that pile up, plus all the projects that pile up, quickly you can be living in a space where you can't actually do the things you want to do. Different friend of mine for many years, he got to the point where he had three different storage units around Eugene and a one bedroom apartment packed full of stuff to the point where he had an alleyway to walk through. Now, this individual had been houseless in the past and I'm glad I'm finally getting some lights, cool. <laughs> uh, had been houseless in the past, but and that was the control space he could do. But what he would do is find items that people could use and then when he found houseless individuals, he would give them to them, which was great. All he needed was that little push to actually give him out. So he gave out a storage unit worth of stuff to people that needed it. And then we cleared out another storage unit worth of stuff that was useless. Then we cleared out another storage unit of stuff of things that he had kept that got a lot of water on them and uh, animals had infested it. Cleared out three storage units worth of stuff. That was holding him back from success in life by having to pay for those three things, three units every month. Finally got him down to just the apartment. He's doing a pretty good job of managing that on his own, but his life was completely overwhelmed by his stuff. So what can we learn from these folks? Trauma needs to be processed. Trauma needs to be worked through. You can control certain elements of your environment and that's okay. As minimal as you can in our, our chaotic changing world. But overall, if you let stuff own you, then it can become a problem. So instead, I encourage you to own your stuff and figure out what stuff you want to keep that still brings you your own personal joy. And it's not just physical, that's mental and emotional baggage too. Just throwing that on there too. All right, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful day and don't be owned by your stuff. Mr. Toastmaster.